YouTubes! Welcome back, Haunt Fam. So, right before we left for MHC, Brother Vic from Tree of Terror dumped these cool dragon claw sconces on me. He said, here, cobwebs, I don't need these, do something with them. So today, that's our project. We're going to fix these bad boys up, change colors, and uh, I think we're going to put a little patina on them, and we're going to remake these for haunt season. So, uh, let's get started. Okay, YouTubes, so our sconces are on the bench. The first thing I want to do is we want to clean these guys. Before we paint and do anything, we want to make sure any surface contaminants are off these guys. So I've got a little bit of wax and grease remover here. This is for automotive purposes. Um, it won't take off paint or anything like that. You could use isopropyl alcohol. You could use acetone. You could use a uh, mild soap and water if you wanted to. But before I sand anything, I like to go ahead and clean it and make sure we get all the little surface uh, garbage off of it. Any fingerprints, grease, oil, anything that might keep paint from sticking. So we're going to wipe all these torches down. I'm going to take a little brush. And I'm going to get in all these little cracks and crevices so I know that we're clean. So that shows up real nice. And I just want to go over the whole sconce. And then once I get everything clean, I'm going to take just a sanding pad which is a scotch bright. You could also use light sandpaper or steel wool, it don't matter. I'm just not a fan of painting on top of something that has a shiny surface or hasn't been scuffed. It's just the way I do things. I work on uh, automotive fields, so I'll take a little bit of uh, wax and grease remover. And I'm going to scuff this whole guy down, and it's not only going to clean it, but it's going to prep our surface for paint. So I'm going to go ahead and knock both these claws out, make sure they're crystal clean, and we're going to come back and fix some of the little cracks and stuff like that, and then we're going to move right on to paint. Okay, YouTubes, so our sconces are nice and clean. I went ahead and scuffed them. Uh, the scuffing also takes away any loose paint, so that way that's off and out of our way. Uh, so any little white burn throughs we don't have to worry about. I did notice there is some damage on here. These are resin, so they were probably shot onto a, a little mesh background or something like that for strength. And there are some little holes in here where uh, you can see it's been cracked away or eaten away or it got weak where there was an air bubble behind the skin. So we're gonna fix that. And how do you fix that? It's easy, there's a bunch of ways. You don't have to be a pro at all. You could use air dry clay. You could fill it with hot glue. You could fill it with uh, super glue and pour baking soda on top of it to make a little patch for it. But I'm gonna go ahead and use UV resin. It's fast and you all know I hate waiting. So let's fix up these cracks real fast and then we're gonna move right on to base coat. Okay, YouTube, so we got a little air bubble right here. You can see where the resin doesn't fill in. So we're gonna go ahead and just use our UV resin. We're gonna fill that little spot in. Just like so. Flood that little area. And then we're going to take our UV light and we're going to cure it. So in about 20, 30 seconds, it should be cured. And on a hot day like today, when it's 90 degrees, by the time we get this outside, it'll be rock hard. But usually this is enough to go ahead and fill our little pocket that we're missing there, a little air bubble pocket. And it should be good and strong like new. We can paint right over it. With just a UV cure resin. And then we'll test it. Uh, all right. We're good to go. I think we can move on to paint. Let's go to paint. Okay, YouTube. So, what I want to do is I want to make these a beautiful copper color and then we're going to do some patina on them. So, instead of starting with the black, I've got a Satin Espresso 2X here. Uh, so, I'm going to go ahead and base these guys out. And I don't want to get them completely brown, just mostly brown. So, here we go. Just nice in them deep recesses. We're going to put a nice base coat across everything of the dark espresso brown. Not real heavy, just a light coat. Okay, YouTube, it's been about 15 minutes since our espresso dried. I went and got two copper coats. I've got a bright copper and a classic copper, both rust -oleum metallic products. I love them both. We're gonna take the darker of the colors and we're gonna hit these next. I'm not trying to get every single nook and cranny. I just wanna basically spray them, base them out, and make them copper. There we go. Just like so. Okay, YouTube, so it's been about 10 minutes or so since our uh, classic copper dried. I've got our bright copper here. I'm gonna go ahead and dry brush. I've got an old brush that I use for dry brushing something else in the brown family, so I'm gonna use that. I'm just gonna spray on. And we see that's like a brand new penny. And I just wanna hit high points. I just wanna catch the tips of them scales and hit high points. So it looks like it's been rubbed or touched or, but not completely. 
So I just want to kind of go through and dry brush this whole thing so there's bright copper against the dark classic copper. Spray some more. I'm just going to use an old cardboard box, load up my brush, and then we're just going to touch some of these scales and knuckles. I'm going to go over both of these, and when I come back, we're going to put a green patina on these. We're going to use some wax and some more paint. Okay, YouTubes. So our paint's pretty dry. We got our two different color coppers on, our darker color and our lighter color. And now I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna fill in the little crevices with a dark brown color. So I got this red oak stain by Minwax. I'm using the same brush that I uh, uh, dry brushed that last bright copper with. And you can see it's really sort of a dark kind of brown color, which I really kind of like. So I'll just work off the lid. And base all I wanna do is just stab in. Then I got some old shop rags, we'll just wipe away. So we see that that brown kind of stays down in there. And if you think it's still too much, just go ahead and dab it away. If you take too much off, it's okay to go ahead and just stipple some more in there. So I want to put some brown on this, some aged copper look. And I'm going to go over the whole hand. Actually, I'll go over both hands. And I think I'm going to let this sit overnight to really dry up. It takes about three hours for the stain to dry, but it instantly gives that aged copper look. So once this is bone dry, uh, I think tomorrow we'll come back. We'll do the green verdigris on there and kind of age it, make it look like the Statue of Liberty a little bit. And then we'll hang these bad boys and get them ready for the haunt. Okay, YouTube, so we're going to be ready to patina these dragon claws. I want to go with the same effect as this since copper is naturally uh, oxidizes into a greenish blue color, just like the Statue of Liberty. I want the same thing here with this uh, bat on this uh, coffin display lid. And this is just uh, spray paint before I mounted the bat up there. So this is the look we're going for. We're going to get set up and we're going to start patinaing those dragon claws. Okay, YouTube. So you can see our oil stain sunk down in all the little cracks and kind of brought everything out and showed a lot more of the detail off. Uh, so I'm happy with that. So next I'm going to put a green patina on this like we were talking about with the, uh, the bat. So I've got some Sculpt Nouveau green. I uh, love the color, and again, I'm going to work from my darkest color out, and at this point, if you wanted to go back and dry brush some more bright copper, uh, that'd be fine. It's kind of up to you how far you want to go, uh, but I like kind of like the aged, crusty dungeon look. So for me, what I like to do is just get a little bit of the wax on here, and this is just uh, wax is all it is. I like to just take a little acid brush, although you could use a... A brush probably for a big project like this it's okay uh, I'm not sure how crazy I want to go with the patina so I'm just gonna go a little bit of time and I'm just gonna sort of stipple on just like so I'll just work off the lid and if you know how much you want hey great but if not we'll give this like on a day like today it's a hundred degrees outside it's probably hundred and five in here with our uh, with our uh, heat index so I don't want to be too crazy so I might just go ahead and wipe off in here and then just let that dry as I like it. So basically I'm just going ahead and I'm kind of punching in. I'm wiping away. You can dab, you can wipe. Get down on them knuckles. And then generally it's the pieces, it's the parts where, you know, mother nature would touch or rub or weathers or birds would sit on. That would be the shinier parts. But I love that this green color just sets right down on that copper, man. That's awesome. And just, just that little bit right there, I mean, it looks great. But I, I do want to go back. I'm going to go ahead and knock out both these. We're going to use a bright sour green apple. You could use a turquoise color, it don't matter. And I'm going to dry brush just a little bit to bring out just a little second variation. So we have a much brighter green in there. So I'm going to knock these guys out. I'm going to keep on stippling away. When I come back, we're going to dry brush with our uh, bright green color to kind of add to the, add to the uh, effect of our patina. Okay, YouTube, so our wax job turned out pretty good. I really like that. I'm happy with the colors. It's been a couple of hours. It's super sticky and nasty outside. So the last thing I want to do is add just a little touch of green to this thing. So we're going to go ahead and dry brush. And you could use acrylic paint for this. It doesn't matter. Um, you could use a blue-green color. I've got some of this uh, satin green apple left over, so I'm going to go with this. So I'm just going to spray right here. Yeah, I'll just go ahead and dry brush on. Just hit them edges. Again, just another old brush that I used to dry brush a different color with. And I just want to touch them edges a little bit, just to bring a little bit more of that green color. Tops of the scales. Again, if you don't like it, you can go ahead and not so much wipe it off, but dab it off. So just to hit the kind of tips, a little bit on that edge. Not too crazy. Maybe them edges right here. 
So I'm gonna go around and add just the top of these, uh, just a little bit of dry brush and add just a second little uh, color in there, another element of color. I'm gonna knock out both these uh, dragon sconces. When we come back, I'm gonna show you guys the shades that I chose for these and the bulbs. And then uh, I'm gonna put these guys together, we're gonna hang them, and we're gonna see these things displayed and ready to go for Halloween. Okay, YouTubes. So when I got these sconces, I didn't have any shades. I didn't have any bulbs, so I figured I'll search Amazon. We're gonna go ahead and put some True Fire flame bulbs in there. I think those will look awesome since they are dragon torches. I got one for each side, and I've got some sconces. So thank you, puppers. So now these were a little bit pricey. Uh, you can get them at Menards. Home Depot has some. I hope I got the right kind. Uh, I got two for twenty-six bucks. So. We basically got 26, I think the bulbs were 10 bucks a piece, maybe like 46 bucks on this whole project. Because uh, Brother Vic gave us a sconce, so thank you Brother Vic. My trio brother, if you guys get a chance, go check out my trio brothers, man. Dave at the Weird Kid Show, Dave just broke a thousand subs, so that's awesome. Uh, and Vic over at uh, Monster Misfits. It's Halloween every day for us, we're always doing projects. Um, we're always building something, we're always up to something, so... Stop by and show my brothers some love, subscribe, leave them some comments, and check out what they're building. Okay, made in China. Can't make our own damn uh, ball sconces. Alright, let's see what we got. Okay, so the pack inside. So I didn't go too crazy. I got two sconces. Or shades, I guess I should say. And they sort of have like a little, like a little pattern on there, although I wish they were kind of yellow. Maybe we'll change that. Let's uh, let's work on that. Let's make these yellow. Okay, YouTube. So these shades are a little white. I was kind of hoping they'd be a little more like a tannish yellowy color. So I've got some nicotine spray, which is transparent. I think we hit them with a coat of that, and we should be good to go on the uh, on the dragon sconces. So we got that real faint color. Ooh, I don't want to spray my monkey. Yeah, just that nice light coat of off-white on there. So I'm going to go ahead and spray paint both these sconces. I'll probably go ahead and I'll put a coat of uh, satin on there too, just to kind of lock this down since it is transparent. And we'll have a nice tan shade for that fire to shine through. So next time we see these things, um, we're going to have these bad boys mounted. We're going to take a look at them and see them in the house. Okay, YouTubes, we're done. Check them out. Got them plugged in. I gotta add an extension cord to one side, but man, they kind of put the room in a nice glow. It's still daylight out, so I'll draw the shades. We can see what they look like in the total dark. Okay, YouTubes. I got all the curtains pulled. It's still daylight while I'm shooting this, but uh, man, you guys get the picture. Pretty awesome. I like how it plays on the ceiling and against the back of the wall. The shades worked out pretty good the ones I got off Amazon, and I've only got like $40 in this whole project with the bulbs. So I'm super happy with it. These are just so cool. I can't wait to see it like in total darkness. Maybe even on Halloween night when we get the rest of the house fixed up. All right, let me show you guys what these things look like. A little up close. All right, YouTubes. You can see our patina. Worked out real good. We got the dark greens and the lighter greens in there dry brushed on. They're both a little bit different, which I like. So it looks like they patina at different rates. But overall, I love the patina on them. Show you guys the other one. So this is our sort of aged copper with the green patina. And I'm real happy with it. I think these are gonna look awesome uh, in the house for Halloween. Hell, maybe even year round, we'll see. But just that little bit of green spray paint, a little bit of green wax. Man, we got us a dragon claw. Okay, YouTube, so that's our Dragon Claw sconces, courtesy of Brother Vic over at Monster Misfits. You guys get a chance, go check them out. I'm just one third of the trio. Uh, go see Dave at uh, the Weird Kid Show. He just made a thousand subs, so we're pretty psyched about that. And uh, man, another project in the can. We're gonna keep on pushing on until Halloween. The trio does projects year round, guys. It's Halloween for everybody all the time. So uh, thanks for watching, thanks for sticking around. I hope you guys taught you a little something. Maybe you can use the same little trick on something you got. So if you got an old prop or an old piece that you find at a yard sale or something somewhere, hey, don't pitch it in the trash. Just give it new life, man. Just redo it. Give it a makeover. A little facelift doesn't hurt anything. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.